Hey folks, here we go again. Another adventure. So today, Kelly's Lawn Service, we are going to be uh, servicing this tractor. We have a little, you know, pretty standard homeowner lawn tractor. It's a Husqvarna. So customer hit something while he was mowing. And I think that's about the description that I got and then it stopped working. So we're gonna take a quick look at this thing and see what happened if you bent the blade. So taking a closer look, what's going on? It looks pretty definite to me that he broke the main spindle or mandrel, whatever the Husqvarna people call it. And um, yeah, looks like he's got some damage there. Let's see what else. Yeah, the belt's all. So we're gonna pull it into the shop. And uh, I think to be safe, we're definitely gonna take the deck off, flip it over, see what kind of damage we have. And uh, so let's pull her into the shop and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, great. And we did go pick this up from the customer who was not home. And he also forgot to leave us the key to the machine. So just a quick tip. Most of these John Deere's all use the same key. Most of all the tractors use the same kind of key. So this is a Husqvarna, but just by looking at the uh, ignition, I'm like, that looks exactly like a John Deere. And sure enough, our John Deere key works perfectly in the Husqvarna ignition. So luckily we had that. So let's pull her in. Okay, so now we have her in the shop here. And like I said before, we're gonna remove the um, mower deck. And usually the first step to removing the deck would be to lower it. This is, uh, this is how this one works anyway. So we're gonna bring it all the way down uh, as low as we can bring it because that gives us better access to these pins that we're gonna have to pull. And then there's a cable there which is for the PTO, which engages and disengages the blades. And there's usually always one in the front, so we're gonna pull that one. So on this particular machine, we're gonna remove that. And we will remove the pin on the side here. And then there's a cable that comes down, which goes to a spring, which is, like I said, the PTO that engages the blades. So we're gonna remove that. And we'll, I don't know if you can see it, there's a big spring remove that and then there's another identical one on the other side so we're gonna go ahead and do that and we'll be right back okay so we removed these two back hook and pins and on this particular machine it actually has um, four pins so there's two pins up here you have to drop you don't need to remove the bolts on these you could just pull those pins out of there and then I don't know if you could see it from here that's where the PTO cable hooks on there. And then there's a big spring and a hook right there. So you're gonna have to uh, remove this first. You, usually there's a cutter pin. This one doesn't have a pin in it. Maybe it's just missing. We'll see as we get a little closer. And I'm gonna pop this off. And then we have to unhook the belt from the very front pulley, which this one does not require any removal. You just hook it, unhook it from those and um, over the pulley and that'll come right off. So I do not have my camera girl here today. So I'm gonna have to put the camera down and we'll come right back. Okay, so it did not have a pin. It had a plastic tab, which you can see better as I get off. But I just wanted to show you basically how this one came off. We just took a flathead screwdriver and pushed it in so now 
as soon as we unhook the rest of these uh, pins from the deck, we can slide the deck over to release the tension and then we can remove that big spring. Okay, so we pulled those other pins from these things. These just pop right off, they drop down. And then we unhooked our belt from the front pulley. We just pop it over those two hooks. And then we removed our PTO cable. You can see, sorry about the camera. There was a hole in there. There just was no pin, but then there's this little plastic push thing. So you just push this and that, that pops it right out. And then you pull it out, unhook the cable, and then you're able to lift up the spring and remove that PTO thing. So now that we have the deck pretty much free and clear, I put a jack under the back of the machine once you unhook these, like unhook those first so it's on the ground. Then you put a um, jack under there and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go slide the deck right out from underneath. Again, no camera girl, so bear with me. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna do this. There we go. And then it is out free and clear from the machine. We're gonna clean it off a little bit and then we're gonna flip it over and we're going to investigate just how much damage is done. Hopefully it's just the spindle. And we will Take it apart and we'll be right back. All right, here it is. We were able to flip it over and most definitely has broken the spindle. It's aluminum, so I think they're made to snap when if you hit them really hard. I can tell just by looking at it, the blades bent. You must have hit it. Oh yeah, you hit that pretty good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove this and we're gonna See if we have the right parts and we'll be right back. Okay, so we were able to get the spindle out. Now, as you can see, all the broken ears of the spindle are on there and the bolts are in there. Um, the spindle is no longer connected to those pieces there, but we were able to get that out. We had to pull the pulley off of the top and then the spindle uh, popped right through. So now we're going to have to remove the bolts from these um, pieces on there. So I'm going to use an impact wrench. I strongly suggest <laughs> you use pliers or a vice grip of some sort on the other side and not your hand because if you put the impact on the bolt and it's tight and that could cut you really bad. So if you are doing this job, uh, you know, just think a little. Be careful. Safety first, right? All right, again, no camera girl, so I got to turn it off. Okay, so for this job, so far what we have found is the blade. I think I showed you in one other video how to tell if your blades are bent. This one's very obviously bent, but you line them up and, I mean, you could see that without even, that, that blade is bent. Anyway, so we ordered new blades, new set of blades. These are fancy green ones. I don't know, maybe they cut better if they're green. I'm not sure, we'll find out. But our blades match, so we line them up to our old ones to make sure. Uh, we got a new belt because, you know, when you're doing the job, you might as well put a new belt on just in case while you're in there. And here's our new spindle, or like I said before, I think it's Swedish, Husqvarna, Mandrell, anyway. So it looks to me, which is pretty cool, this one actually came with new bolts, came with a new bolt on the bottom for the, and it came with a new bolt on top, which is very cool because you seldom get hardware when you get new stuff. So obviously take your part, you know, I already lined it up. Sorry about the camera work here. I checked the length, I checked the width, all that kind of stuff, make sure the part is the right part. I already took it and put it into the lower deck here to see if the everything lines up exactly. It does. Now, I will fool around with it more and see, because I'm not 100% sure. Does it go this way? 
does it go this way or does it not matter which way it goes it seems to line up no matter which way you put it so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this thing together as soon as we get back now parts I'll tell you how I do it I don't know everybody has a different way of doing it but I basically go on to um, Husqvarna.com you go into the model number of your machine it gives you the schematics blueprints whatever you want to call it and you look up the exact parts that you need and write down the part number and then I know I'm bad but I go right on to Amazon and I put in the part number and I order all my stuff through Amazon so that's where I get most of my parts anyway but it's usually a sure hit you get exactly what you're looking for and it's really easy to find so we're gonna go ahead and start the reassembly process on this deck here and we'll go through the steps as we do that okay okay so we have our new spindle stall here matched up to the other one it didn't matter which way it went actually it just fit either way it's good so now we're going to start from the bottom so we're gonna mount our fancy new green super blades on here it's really difficult to do this without a camera person anyway so that goes now these have a, a gear and as I had mentioned in some of my other videos you have your little fins on your blades so fins always go up fins up thumbs up that's what we say here all the time so up obviously means to the bottom side of the deck so when we put our blade in here I hope you can see that we put our blade in the gear this one has a gear some don't some do and our fins are pointing towards the bottom of the deck which would be up and I had a brand new bolt in my hand somewhere but anyway we're gonna bolt our blades on here uh, and we'll go from there and we'll flip her over okay so now we have our new spindle on and we have our new blades installed all right so one of the most important things whenever you hit something with a blade or anything like that like this was a pretty extreme one where it actually broke the spindle you need to check your alignment of your blades i actually have a entire video on this i will put it in the um, link in the end okay so uh, let me get a straight edge of some sort here i don't have anything anyway if you look down here now this is cutting edge to cutting edge right here and you bring them to the top now you can see this one is higher than this one okay and you can spin the blade the other way if you want to double check the other side but again if you look it's not level so what that means is when you cut your grass you're going to have this eighth inch or quarter inch dip in between your blades it's going to look really ugly you don't want to do that so what ha what happened is these uh, non-commercial decks are kind of flimsy so what happens is the deck is bent around the, where the broken spindle was so what we have to do is we have to flip it over figure out which side is high which side is low and we have to bend the deck until these blades come perfectly even otherwise you're never going to get an even cut so like i said i have another video on how to do that so i'm not going to get in too much detail but we'll show you as we go through the steps and how we level that out okay so now that we figured out which side was high and which side was low on that we um, are going to make an adjustment on the deck here okay now some people do this different ways i use these two particular tools piece of two by four and a bfh you figure out what that means anyway <laughs> we're going to lower this side of where the spindle is and then we're going to flip the deck back and forth a couple times until we get those blades perfectly where they're supposed to be okay we'll be back okay so we've made a few adjustments and now we're going to get a little technical so we kind of use i use a little magnet magnetic um level 
And as you can see, if I get low enough there, we are really close. You see how it's, can you see light through there? Anyway, it's actually, it is, it is pretty much on the money, but I'm gonna say that it needs to come down just a tiny bit more. Let's see if I move my hand out of the way, you can see there's a little tiny bit of light coming through there. That's the best I could do with the camera work, maybe from the other side. Maybe this side will show a little bit better, let's see. It helps to have a magnetic level. As we get down here, you can see the blades. Uh, one's a little tiny bit higher. I think I'm probably being over technical for this, but it is a tiny bit higher. Sorry, I couldn't display that better, but we're gonna make a couple more adjustments and we'll come right back. Okay, so final adjustment. That's as good as we're gonna get with this. We don't need to get too precise, but there it is. There's your cutting edge to cutting edge. If you take this thing off here, I mean, sometimes just with your finger, you can feel like it is perfectly even tip to tip here on this one to that one. So what that means, and you can spin your blades to check and make sure, but like as you look on this side, it is perfectly even. So that's enough on that, but make sure you get that right before you put it back together. Otherwise you're gonna be very unsatisfied with your cut. All right, now we'll get back to the rest of it. Okay, so we have our, we have our blades aligned. We have our new spindle in. Everything else lines up. I did notice the new spindle actually came with a grease fitting, which you don't really see that very often. Pretty cool, so we greased the spindle there. And now we're gonna put our new belt on. So um, I know it's not the most exact way to do it, but so what I do when I get a new belt to the old belt is I hang them from, just hang them from a nail there and then just, you know, bring it down your finger on there, kind of level them out, make sure you're in the right ballpark because belts, I mean, you could be a half size off and it's just not gonna work out. So always check the length of the belt, just like you checked the length of your blades and make sure that works. So we're gonna reinstall the belt and then we're gonna slide this right back underneath the tractor and reinstall the deck and we'll go from there. Okay, so now we have our new belt installed. We've gone through all the pulleys, we checked our uh, brakes on there, make sure everything's releasing. And there is an adjustment on the brake too, in case it's hanging up. And usually on, especially unless it's a really old machine, there's always a diagram here. Shows you which way to run your belt in case you pull it off and didn't take a picture of it. So this one shows you that. So this is your main pulley over, uh, look at my finger. <laughs> I'm not very good at that. Anyway, that one there is your main pulley. And uh, this will go around that so you can see we have the diagram the right way and it's routed the right way. So now we're gonna go back and install the deck. Okay, so now as we reinstall, we slid the lower deck back underneath the machine and then try to do it exactly the way you took it off. So the last two pieces I unhooked were these big pins on these two bars. Okay, so put those two bars on first and then we will go and we will hook the PTO spring on the other side over there. You can see it. We'll hook that back in and then we will lower the machine back down so we can get these hooked because you can see how far they are from the deck. So that's what we're going to do next. Like I said, try to do it in exact reverse as the way you took it off so you don't have a hard time. Uh, lining up some of these different hooks. Okay, and there you have it. We have the deck reinstalled. So we have all four of the big pins. We have the front pin, and we have the cable that goes for the PTO. We got the belt on there. So we're gonna check a few basic things when you put something back together. Okay, so now you can see the belt it's loose the way it should be because the PTO power takeoff or blade engagement or whatever you like to call it. I call it the, this thing here. So what you do is you take this and you engage it. And you go down here and you check your belt. Now the belt looks tight all the way around like it should because that would mean your blades would be on and that's how 
that's gonna work. So we can disengage that. So we know that's good. So that's the first thing you check. And then we're gonna bring our height back, back up to the top here. And we are going to check the level of the deck because now I know we hit something with the spindle. Obviously broke the spindle and broke the blade, but if you catch the deck on something as you're driving, you could push the deck back or you can bend it so it's not level. Okay, so I already took the liberty of measuring this deck. In a second here, sorry about the camera. Anyway, so if you just go over here, just a, just a little basic idea of how we do it. So you can see we're about three and a half on this side. And if you go over here, now this isn't the technical way to do this, but this is just a rough idea. And you go over here and it's at three. So there's a half inch difference uh, level, um, lower on this side and higher on that side. So we're gonna make an adjustment, which there is a level adjustment thing right here. And I noticed on the front of this, there's the wheels, the guide wheels. So these guide wheels, you can see the pins, they are up all the way to the highest position. So what that means is they're not touching, they're not touching the ground or the grass in any way, shape or form. They're not helping at all. So we're gonna move those guide wheels back down to a lower position where they will level the deck. Because if you've ever cut and you made a sharp turn, sometimes you'll notice, especially with lawn tractors, the deck will like go down on one side and it'll cut deeper. So putting these wheels down where they can touch and hold the deck from doing that. So that's what we're gonna do next. And then we're gonna level it out a little bit and we'll be right back. Okay, so I have got it to the point where I like it. So we've measured on both sides exactly. We have it perfectly even. The number doesn't matter. It just depends where you have and how it's even. So on each side of the deck, we have checked front, back, and made sure that it's even. So on this particular machine, they all have different kind of levelers, but this has a leveler on just one side because the other side hangs freely and this side adjusts. So the deck will tilt up this way or down depending on this side. So that's how you do it on this particular machine. They're all a little bit different. And then we took these guide wheels and we have moved them down all the way to the lowest position so that they will actually hit the ground before the deck hits the ground because I don't know why in the world anybody would ever want the deck to go that low. So anyway, we put those in. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it for a little test drive. We're gonna cut some grass and we are going to uh, check and see how she's cutting. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, one more thing real quick. Uh, so whenever you do work on something like this with the PTO, I hope you can hear me, I know the machine's running, but always test the uh, PTO on the driveway or on the flat, not on the grass or not on like deep grass, because sometimes if there's something wrong or it might get caught up on the grass. So always test it out here before you go cut. So we're gonna go cut and then we'll come right back. Thank you. And there you have it, folks. Perfect, even cut, even made some stripes. That's, that is about as good as you're gonna get with a lawn tractor anyway. But um, I don't know if you can see, perfectly even. Made nice stripes, cuts great. I say the machine is happy and ready to go back to the customer. So thank you so much for watching my video on how to do this. And if you have any questions, please ask. Have a great day, and thanks again for watching.